I'm going to convince you that the limit of a product is the product of the limits. Right? Or specifically, I want to show that the limit of a function f of x equals l1 as x approaches a, and the limit of g of x as x approaches a is equal to l2, means that the limit of f of x times g of x as x approaches a is l1 times l2. Right? This is saying that the limit of a product is the product of the limits, provided the limits exist. To justify this, we're going to go back to this epsilon delta definition of limit. And so the argument's going to start out, proof, let epsilon be bigger than 0. And that epsilon is recording how close I want f of x times g of x to be to l1, l2. And then I've got to figure out how close does x have to be to a in order to guarantee that f of x, g of x is within epsilon of l1, l2. So my next step is going to be to pick delta so that if 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta, then I get to say something about how close uh, f of x, g of x is to l1, l2. But of course, I can't jump right there, right? What do I know so far? I know the limit of f of x is l1, and I know the limit of g of x is l2. So I can pick delta small enough to make f of x as close as I like to l1, and g of x as close as I like to l2. So my plan here is to pick delta small enough so that uh, the absolute value of f of x is close to l1. And the absolute value, or the, I should say just f of x is close to l1, and g of x is close to l2. And I want to make sure that f of x is close enough to l1, and g of x is close enough to l2, in order to guarantee that f of x, g of x, is close to l1, l2. But then how close do I need f of x to l1, and how close do I need g of x to be to l2 in order to guarantee that? Well, let's say that these are both less than epsilon prime, where epsilon prime is the smaller of 1 and epsilon over 1 plus the absolute value of L1 plus the absolute value of L2. But I think this, this seems a little bit made up right now. Right? Where did this come from? I mean, it's going to end up working. Right? But I think it's unclear initially where, where I would have gotten that from. But let's see. So this is just some positive number. Epsilon prime is the smaller of 1 and epsilon over 1 plus the absolute value of L1 plus the absolute value of L2. And that being some positive number, and the fact the limit of f of x is L1 and the limit of g of x is L2, that means that I can choose delta small enough so that whenever x is within delta of a, f of x is within this epsilon prime of L1 and g of x is within epsilon prime of L2. So I can really make f of x uh, within epsilon prime of L1 and g of x within epsilon prime of L2 just because I've been told these limits exist and are equal to L1 and L2, respectively. Now I've got to somehow go from this statement to the statement that f of x, g of x is close to L1, L2. So let's see how, how that's going to work. All right. So I'm going to assume that x is within delta of a. Right. Then I know that f of x minus L1 is uh, less than epsilon prime in absolute value. So that means that f of x minus L1 is between minus epsilon prime and epsilon prime. And g of x is close to L2. It's between minus epsilon prime and epsilon prime. g of x minus L2 is. Okay. We've got to remember what epsilon prime is, because that will be important later. Epsilon prime is the smaller of 1 in that fraction. OK, so let's take this first thing here. And uh, maybe this doesn't seem super motivated, but I'm going to multiply this by, by L2. Right? And L2 might be negative, so I'm going to put in some absolute value signs in the appropriate places. But let's multiply this first inequality by L2. And I'll get negative epsilon prime times the absolute value of L2 is less than f of x times L2 minus L1 L2 is less than epsilon prime times the absolute value of L2. I do the same trick to the second inequality here. g of x minus L2 is between minus epsilon prime and epsilon prime. I'm going to multiply this by L1, taking into account some, some absolute values. So this will be minus epsilon prime times the absolute value of L1 times g of x L1 minus L1 L2 is less than epsilon prime absolute value L1. 
So this is telling me that I can get f of x times L2 close to L1, L2. And this is telling me I can get g of x, L1 close to L1, L2. It's not really what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get f of x times g of x close to L1, L2. So I'll multiply these two inequalities together. And that tells me that f of x, g of x, let me write it like this, f of x minus L1 times g of x minus L2 is between minus epsilon prime squared and epsilon prime squared. So that, this is what I get just by multiplying these two inequalities. And then I can distribute out the middle of this last inequality. So this is minus epsilon prime squared. And if I distribute here, I get f of x, g of x. That's good. Plus l1, l2. That's, that's less good. Minus. Uh, g of x l1 minus f of x l2 is less than epsilon prime squared. So I just distributed the uh, middle product here. f of x g of x plus l1 minus g of x l2 minus f of x l2. That's not exactly what I wanted. All right, I really want some statement about f of x g of x being close to l1 l2. But here's the deal, right? f of x g of x. And then I went minus L1, L2. Well, what do I know about G of X, L1? G of X, L1 is close to L1, L2. And F of X, L2, that's close to L1, L2. So this thing in the middle here should be close to F of X, G of X plus L1, L2 minus something close to L1, L2 minus something close to L1, L2. So hopefully this thing in the middle here is really going to look like F of X, G of X minus L1, L2. T to make that precise, right, I'm going to add these two inequalities to this inequality. Right, so I'm going to add this, these sides. Right, so this will be minus epsilon prime L1 minus epsilon prime L2. In the middle here, I'm going to add these. So that'll be plus f of x L2 minus L1 L2 plus g of x L1 minus L1 L2. And then I'll add these two to this. So this will be plus epsilon prime L1 plus epsilon prime L2. So what does this become in the middle here? I've got a minus g of x L1 plus g of x L1. So these terms will go away. I've got a plus f of x L2 and a minus f of x L2. So those terms will go away. And then I've got a plus L1 L2 and a minus L1 L2. So those terms go away. And what's left? f of x g of x minus L1 L2 is now trapped between these two expressions. Let me copy this up here, just so you can take a look at it a little bit more easily. And this is all still assuming that x is within delta of a. So I'm just going to copy this up here. And what I've got is minus epsilon prime squared, minus epsilon prime L1, minus epsilon prime L2 is less than f of x g of x minus L1, L2. That's really what I want to have some control over to say f of x, g of x is close to L1, L2. And then less than epsilon prime squared plus epsilon prime L1 plus epsilon prime L2. But I want this to say that f of x, g of x minus L1, L2 is between minus epsilon and plus epsilon. And I've got these expressions involving epsilon prime. So this is where we go back and we think, well, what was epsilon prime? Right? Epsilon prime is the smaller of 1 and epsilon over 1 plus the absolute value of L1 plus the absolute value of L2. So that's probably going to be useful at this point. Right? So let's see if we can use that fact. All right, so I've got f of x g of x minus L1, L2 right, in absolute value is less than epsilon prime squared plus epsilon prime times L1 plus epsilon prime L2. Just rewriting that in terms of absolute values. I can factor out an epsilon prime here. So that means that f of x g of x minus L1 L2 is less than epsilon prime times epsilon prime plus the absolute value of L1 plus the absolute value of L2. Now epsilon prime is the smaller of 1 in this other number. So in particular, epsilon prime is no bigger than 1. 
So that means that this is no bigger than epsilon prime times 1 plus the absolute value of L1 plus the absolute value of L2. Because epsilon prime is, is no bigger than 1. Now what else do I know about epsilon prime? I also know that epsilon prime is no bigger than epsilon over 1 plus the absolute value of L1 plus the absolute value of L2. So that means that this is no bigger than epsilon over 1 plus the absolute value of L1 plus the absolute value of L2 times 1 plus the absolute value of L1 plus the absolute value of L2. Well, this is epsilon over something times the same thing. right? So what I'm left with is just epsilon. So by this clever choice of epsilon prime, by choosing epsilon prime to be no bigger than 1 and epsilon over 1 plus absolute value of L1 plus the absolute value of L2, I've actually rigged it so that getting f of x, g of x minus L1, L2 to be less than this quantity in absolute value is the same as getting f of x, g of x with an epsilon of L1, L2. And that's what I really wanted, right? I wanted to know that f of x, g of x was close to L1, L2. How close? With an epsilon, provided that x is within delta of A. So this proves that the product of the limit is the limit of the products provided those limits exist. And now it's up to you to try to use this fact to justify other more complicated limits, like for polynomials. Good luck. <laughs>